You're with the News Grid live on air and streaming online through YouTube, Facebook Live and at aljazeera.com. Thank you for joining us. Guantanamo, the U.S. military prison in Cuba, has long been a symbol of human rights abuses during the so-called War on Terror. It's been notorious for its treatment of prisoners, including reports of torture, abuse and the prolonged detention of suspects without formal charges. Former President Barack Obama vowed to close the infamous facility within a year after taking office. But while many prisoners were released, Obama was unable to keep his promise to shut down Guantanamo altogether. Now, his successor, Donald Trump, has signed an executive order to keep open the U.S. military prison in Cuba. Trump announced the decision in his first State of the Union address, saying the U.S. may send more detainees to Guantanamo. I am asking Congress to ensure that in the fight against ISIS and al-Qaeda, we continue to have all necessary power to detain terrorists wherever we chase them down wherever we find them. And in many cases, for them, it will now be Guantanamo Bay. Now, why is Guantanamo so controversial? Well, let's start from the beginning. The U.S. rents the facility from Cuba, and it was normally used as a naval and coast guard base for the Americans. The prison, colloquially known as Gitmo, opened on January 11, 2002, to hold prisoners captured during President George W. Bush's so-called war on terror in response to the 9-11 attacks. The facility has been controversial since its opening, with human rights groups complaining about conditions there amid allegations of torture. Some prisoners are reported to have been subjected to extreme interrogation techniques like waterboarding and sleep deprivation. Joining us now on the news grid is Shane Cadidal. He's senior managing attorney of the Guantanamo Project at the Center for Constitutional Rights. He's via Skype from New York. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, President Trump's announcement about keeping Guantanamo open is not really a surprise because during the campaign, he talked about his desire to load it up with some bad dudes, he said. What, first of all, will change in practical sense at the detention facility now that this executive order has been signed? Um, absolutely nothing, all right? And this is this is one of the amazing things about it. You'll remember that a year ago, the first draft executive orders relating to Guantanamo were being leaked out um, from the White House to the press to gauge reaction. Um, those orders were very, those draft orders were very, very detailed. This one that was released last night says hardly anything other than that he plans to keep it open and that he plans to basically cede all policy decisions um, to the military, you know, to the generals who he's always, uh, you know, um, gushing about, um, uh, who are so um, so numerous in his administration, mm. right? Uh, other than that, there's, there's not really any statement about what type of prisoners might be brought there in the future right. or really much of anything about what he intends to do with the people who are there now. Well, Shane, let's just uh, take a moment and talk about the number of detainees in Guantanamo. 780 people have been held there since 2002, many without charge or criminal trial. Some of the high-profile prisoners include Khaled Sheikh Mohammed, the alleged mastermind of the 9-11 attacks, who was charged with war crimes. 197 detainees were either transferred, repatriated, or resettled during the Obama administration, including Canadian Omar Khadr in 2015. He was arrested when he was just 16 years old and spent 10 years at Guantanamo. President Obama, as we said, was unable to make good on his pledge to shut down the facility because of concerns over the fate of some of the prisoners deemed too risky of being freed. 41 prisoners are still being held at the military prison today. Uh, Shane, the executive order says that the U.S. Uh, is planning on sending more prisoners there. President Trump even talked about ISIL prisoners. What's your reaction to that? And if, you know, they're planning on sending ISIL prisoners to Guantanamo, does it mean that they're holding them somewhere else already? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, you know, a couple interesting things about that. Uh, you know, first of all, um, uh, he also announced that he he seems to think that the war against ISIL is almost over. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, we had make more commitments of ground troops in the last year, um, about 500 kind of special operations troops, um, in addition to the 400 advisors that were there when Obama left office. So there is a chance that they might capture somebody um, in an infantry action or a special operations action and then have no place to 
to turn them over to. They probably won't want to turn them over to the Syrians. The Iraqis probably won't take them. Um, if the home country doesn't want to take them and prosecute them, that's the kind of person who might be taken to Guantanamo. But, mm. you know, as that war winds down, I think that's increasingly unlikely. And so the bigger question becomes what to do with those 41 men who are left. Only 13 of them are charged. Uh, the rest of them, everyone seems to agree, will never be charged. Five of them are cleared for release, and it costs about $10 million a year to hold them at Guantanamo. Mm -hmm. um, now entering their 17th year in detention. Um, and the one thing that was clear up till now before the executive order, before last night, is that Trump has no intention right. of letting anyone go, no matter how simple or benign the allegations against him are. Does this new executive order, Shane, leave the door open, do you think, to more new abuses being committed at Guantanamo? I think any time uh, you detain somebody without any legal rights, um, uh, without any kind of um, oversight from the courts uh, in the way that you would have in the civilian system when they're charged criminally in the United States, uh, that is a system that's ripe for abuses. So, you know, certainly the worst days of abuses at Guantanamo uh, for most of the people who aren't on hunger strike are long behind us. Um, but by the same token, um, this kind of rhetoric that we see from this president um, uh, certainly, I think, you know, has a tendency to encourage um, the worst in, in people at the, at the sort of um, field level, right? Thank you so much for speaking to us. Shane Cadidal of the uh, Guantanamo Project at the Center for Constitutional Rights via Skype from New York. Thank you so much for your time. Well, let's now bring in our social media producer, Andrew 